Okay. Will each of my audience members stand up, please, and wave to show you're here? One, Hello. two, three. Thank you. The dust had finally settled in South Africa. The apartheid had ended, but tensions were still high. The majority blacks craved vengeance, while the minority whites lived in fear for punishment. South Africa had just defeated New Zealand for the Rugby World Cup. The green team had always been a symbol of white arrogance, so it wasn't a surprise that the black community despised the team. But what, what was surprising was when the crowd erupted in cheer after the game, chanting, Nelson, Nelson. And then the first black South African president, adorned in a green jersey himself, emerged from, emerged from the crowd to give the trophy personally to the white captain of the team and shake hands. His actions were a symbol that resonated among almost all of South Africa. The long, hard fight for freedom was over, and it was time for the country to band together and be proud of both this victory over New Zealand and also the victory over racism. Whether white or black, every South African could, could claim the color green for the night. In cel celebration of Nelson Mandela's life, my thesis for this glorification speech is as follows. Nelson Mandela was a successful freedom fighter. My three main points are, first, he was competent, second, he was courageous, and last, he was forgiving. As, as any freedom fighter should be, Nelson Mandela, Mandela was a strong leader. My first main point is that he was confident. Quoted, quoted by the New York Times, Ahmed Kathara, a close friend to Mandela, traces Mandela's confidence back to his heritage. He said, the first thing to remember about Mandela is that he came from a royal family. That always gave him strength. Young Nelson was born as Roli Lala Mandela in 1918 at Mazio. In 1918, at a village of, with mud huts and cows, where his father ruled as chief of the Fembu people. Even after his father's death, around age nine, Nelson was relocated to the new chief's home to study the throne, where he lived more modernly. Unlike many other traditional upbringings of black people in South Africa, this superior lifestyle aided him to inher inherently believe that he was equal to every man. According to Dr. Carrie Goldberger and Corny Kratz of the Research Center, Quantified Communications in 2013, Nelson Mandela was won over. Nelson Mandela won over many South Africans, always speaking with assumed truth and conviction. He convincingly spoke on behalf of exterminating the apartheid, a system of governance in South Africa demanding white minority rule among blacks. Even his large height and unique fashion were an aid to his confidence level. In conclusion of my first main point, Nelson Mandela was confident. His confidence alone can not only be the source of his success. My second main point is that he was courageous. In her article titled, The Moral Courage of Nelson Mandela, Desmond Tutu said that Nelson Mandela always had moral and ethical courage, even if his words went against the status quo. Oftentimes, as a young man, he was unafraid to voice his own opinions to the African National Congress. The article mentions that he was even courageous enough to continue his involvement with the ANC even after participation was outlawed in South Africa. Bill Keller authored Mandela's 2013 New York Times obituary. In this article, Mandela is portrayed as never lacking courage, even as being tried for a conspiracy and sabotage for his involvement with the African National Congress. Mandela politically proclaimed he was ready to be, die for his ideals. Another member of the ANC once said that Mandela was always the first to volunteer to complete any dangerous or difficult duty. He once was even courageous enough to wear a traditional leopard cape to a hearing at what he called white man's court. To summarize my second main point, Nelson Mandela was courageous. After both his confidence and courageousness led him to endure hardship, Mandela finally succeeded. What came next wasn't a surprise to many. My last main point is that he was forgiven. Again, according to Mandela's New York Times obituary, even after Mandela's efforts succeeded and the apartheid period was ending, Nelson Mandela always promised to not fight racism with racism. He never believed in black supremacy. Instead, he wanted both races equal. During his time as president, he oversaw that white officials be offered amnesty if they admitted fully for their crimes. And he even organized tea luncheons for the wives of white apartheid officials and black ANC officials. According to an article by Dominic Gover, issued in the International Business Times, Mandela has personally demonstrated acts of forgiveness. 
After being jailed for 27 years, Mandela invited his former prison guard to his inauguration ceremony as South Africa's president. On one occasion, Mandela even had lunch with Percy Utar, the state prosecutor at his 1963 treason trial, whom demanded the death penalty for Mandela. Many wondered how Mandela could be so forgiving, so forgiving after having so many friends killed, imprisoned, and ridiculed. But he was firm in his belief for peace. To restate my third main point, Nelson Mandela was forgiving. His forgiving nature truly was the last adornment to his character set that made him truly a worthy public figure. Nelson Mandela from birth believed in equality for the blacks of South Africa. He confidently moved forward in his efforts to achieve justice, and his courage led him to hardships, unima unimaginable by most. One would think that after enduring so much, he would become bitter. However, even his, in his success, he never wavered in his resolve of equality. He would not fight racism with racism. He would forgive. To me, Nelson Mandela was a historical figure that I had always known of, but I had never taken the time to truly research his life. I found that his life was full of small defeats, big victories, and many stories that could never fit within a small speech. Hopefully, each of you have grown in, our, in your admiration for this South African president, and hopefully we each will continue to uncover more of his stories in the years to come. In conclusion, Nelson Mandela was a successful freedom fighter. First, he was confident. Second, he was courageous. And last, he was forgiving. Thank you all for listening today.